Shabbat Shalom. One of the dramatic and intriguing stories of the Torah is the story of the spies, of those 12 who were sent by Moses into the land of Israel. And of course, the story ends with, with tragedy, with the negative report by 10 of the spies, only two of them, Kalev and Yehoshua, come back with a positive report, the response of the people to, to despair. After all, God had promised that they would go into the land of Israel, and here was a negative report. The people in the land were, were too mighty and too large. The fruits were, were so imposing, and, and, and the whole experience was going to be fraught with danger and, and difficulty, and the people despair. And the punishment, of course, is that they're left to wander in the, in the wilderness for, for four decades before they can go into the land of Israel. The day in which the spies delivered their report is, is commemorated in our tradition as being Tisha B'Av, the ninth day of Av. It's such a dramatic moment, sending the spies in and the story ending in such a, such a devastating way. And the question that many of the commentators ask is, what was the real purpose of the spies being sent into the land of Israel? What, was, what were they there to do? God had promised, you will go into the land that I will show you. Isn't that enough? What did you need spies to do? Well, the Zohar offers an extraordinary, extraordinary report as to that Moses may have had some ulterior motives in sending the spies into the land. You see, Moses had already been punished by striking the rock. Moses knew his fate was not to lead the people into the land of Israel. He knew he was never going to see the land firsthand. He knew he was never going to step foot in the land and never taste of the fruits of the land. And so, knowing that, he said, okay, I can live my life not having a sense of what awaits us in the land, of what the land is like, or I can find a way to have a taste of the land of Israel. And so he sends the spies in, and part of the the command that he gives them is to bring back, bring back of the fruits of the land so that I can taste them. And that's his way of achieving what until that moment was unachievable for him. It's a great lesson in leadership. It's a great lesson in resilience. It's a great lesson in how we approach the, the brick walls that often present themselves to us as, as challenges in life. How do I overcome this brick wall? in front of me. Moses knew how. If I can't go into the land, then I'm going to find a way to have the land come to me. The uh, professor, Randy Pausch, who's a professor at Carnegie Mellon who delivered a very well-known lecture called The Last Lecture. As he, was, as he was in the process of dying of a terminal illness, he delivered a lecture and with his reflections on, on life. It's an extraordinary piece of, of, of philosophy and and meditation and inspiration that I encourage you to look up and, and watch. And one of the, the, the sections of the lecture, one of the things he discusses are these brick walls. And he says, brick walls are not there to keep us out. Brick walls are there to test who really wants it. Who is willing to break through those walls? Who is willing to climb over those walls? Brick walls are there to keep the other people out, the people who don't want it enough. Brick walls are not there to keep you and me out. They're simply there to test our resolve and make sure that we want it, that we want our, object our objectives in a sufficient manner. And that's what Moses does, according to the Zohar. That's Moses' contribution in his love for the land of Israel. Yes, you can't go to the land of Israel, Moses, because you have sinned, because that's not, your, that's not what's going to happen. That's not the fate of your personal achievement, is not to lead the people into the land. Your student Joshua will do that. Yehoshua bin Nun will be the one who does that. But that doesn't mean that Moses can't at least have a taste of the beauty of the land of Israel, can't have a taste of the fruit of, of the blessings that exist in the land. That's what the Zohar teaches us, that Moses wanted most of all. If I can't go into the land, if I can't get through that brick wall, well, I'm going to find a way to climb over it, to walk around it, to break through it, to achieve what until this moment was unachievable. And I use this thought to inspire us with so much in life, because there are brick walls that present themselves to us in every instance. There are so many moments where we say, it's simply not possible. I can't do it. I can't achieve it. But a brick wall is an illusion. It's simply there to test those and to differentiate between those who want it enough 
and those who don't, those who are willing to break through, and those who see a brick wall and turn around and say, okay, I've tried, I've done what I can, but there's a brick wall. I can't do any more. We should be blessed. We should all be blessed to be of those who see challenges as opportunities to overcome them, who see impediments in our lives as ways to test our resolve. And we should firm our resolve and make sure that we are, that we are strong in our faith and strong in our motivation. And with that, we can achieve that which at so many moments in our lives seems unachievable. I wish each and every one of you a Shabbat of inspiration, of achievement, and of thinking about how we can overcome the challenges and the impediments of our lives. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you.